Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game SO. Tarek and a continuing series on the Mr. FPGA DE10 Nano Project. And today I'm finalizing my analog video guide because in 2023, basically every single analog format is supported by Mr. either directly through the analog IO or with active adapter boards. So we can talk about every single analog format Mr. supports, the cables you need, the settings you need to get the best analog signal for your use out of Mr. Before we get too far involved there, do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like and subscribe, that notification bell definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we got a Patreon link down below as well. But at this point in time, we have RGBS out, we have VGA, we have component video, and now with newly developed cores and active adapters that are in update all, we also have S-Video and composite video as well. This is basically every single analog format you could possibly imagine. But taking a look at the Mr. Board, and this is for the triple stack, things may be slightly different if you have a different variation. This VGA port can basically do anything you want it to. It is not just a VGA signal, it is a port, and the pins can change the signal that they're carrying based upon your INI settings. Just remember that audio is handled through that headphone port. I get a lot of people asking why they're not getting audio out via the analog out board. And 10 out of 10 times is because that headphone jack is not hooked up to anything. But let's talk about all the formats that Mr. can currently handle off of this port, either with boards or separately with cables. We have VGA 31 kilohertz out, RGB and component video. And now with adapter boards, we also have composite and S video, either independently or running simultaneously at the same time. Now I do know Mr. can do a SCART connection as well. It's not a format I use, so you ask a European member of the Discord for particular settings on that one. But let's jump right into RGB, my favorite of the analog signals for Mr. because it just looks spectacular on my PVMs. It is just a VGA male connector to breakout cables that carry the RGB signal as well as the sync. Now sync on RGB is going to be a single cable even though the cables you usually get are going to have cable leads or both horizontal and vertical sync. On a PVM, you hook green to green, red to red, and blue to blue, go figure. And then I find for the cable I use, the gray lead is the sync I need, and the black lead is absolutely unnecessary. Now they do change manufacturing sometimes, so it might be possible that that switches. But I mean, RGB is literally the red, the blue, and the green signals, and then you have the sync signal as well. And this is basically an arcade standard that also works on consoles. Now to get the sync set up for RGBS, you're gonna need to have it toggled to be on. That's composite sync. That is what we're gonna be used for RGB CRTs and the PVM in my example here. If we turned it off, it would separate the sync and that's gonna be for VGA and we'll get to that in a moment. If the menus look slightly different, I am mixing and matching previous videos as sort of a mega guide. Now just be aware, and I warned people before, the BNC breakout cable I recommend is quite heavy, so just make sure you structure it in a way that it's not putting stress on that port. And here's the thing about PVMs and RGB signals. Every PVM is different, every monitor is different, and I have not found a single setting that will allow me to use every single core without having to adjust the screen size. I have not found a PVM that will do this for arcade boards or original hardware either. It's not a Mr. issue, it's just part and parcel of using analog video, so get familiar with getting into the service menu and changing things around. And the great part about a CRT, whether it's a PVM or otherwise, is this. Some games a lot of arcade games run in Tate mode, especially for shmups. That means that we're actually having a different screen space configuration than a standard 4x3 monitor. The great thing about analog video is that you can just turn it on its side. Grab that TV, grab that PVM, throw it at a 90 degree angle, and you have Tate mode ready to go. And like I said, another reminder, just remember, you gotta deal with the audio out. Every single video, someone comments they have no audio. It is a separate connector. Please remember that. Now, moving on to component video, this is going to be basically the best standard you can get on a consumer CRT. It's very rare in North America to see a CRT that'll accept an RGB signal. That's basically PVM and BVM territory. Now, this does have a green, a blue, and a red cable, but it's actually YPBPR. A lot of people think that this is an RGB standard, and it is not. It is luminous and sync, the delta of blue and luma, and the delta of red and luma. So it's not carrying each individual color signal separately. It is just using a red, a blue, and a green cable to denote the different things. And remember, on the side of your mister, you have that sync on green switch, and that does become important when you're dealing with component video. But I'll get to that in a few moments. Now for the PVM crowd, 
Hooking up component video is relatively easy, but you do need a BNC to an RCA adapter because 99 out of 100 times, if you have component available on your PVM, it is not going to be in the plug standard you need. But just look at the back of the PVM and you're going to see YPBPR and the signals that you need to tap for them. It's going to be RGB, but they're also capable of doing component video as well. If you have a consumer television, it's going to be a lot easier. Plug the cable into the back, color coded, and you're 100% good to go. But just pick up some of these BNC to RCA adapters. They're like five bucks and they're worth their weight in gold. I have like 20 of them and you need them if you're going to be dealing with PBMs. Now again, going over to the menu and like I said, if this looks a little bit older, the settings are the same. Visually, it changed just a little bit. You do need to enable component video over the analog output. You'll see if it's off, it's going to be RGB. And if it's on, it's going to be component. And it's going to tell you what switch to toggle for swing gun green as well. Pay attention to the prompts because when you go to component video, you need to enable that sync on green because that is how component video syncs. Now moving over to VGA standards, these type of monitors are a dime a dozen. And unfortunately this one got cracked in shipping, but it's basically a new old stock Sony Vio that has an absolutely spectacular image to it. But 99 out of 100 of these monitors are not going to take 15 kilohertz signal. If you find one that does, you found a gold mine. But we just need a standard VGA cable to deal with a VGA monitor. But we do need to change the sync settings because VGA is both horizontal and vertical syncs. It's not a singular sync, it is two. So again, menus might look slightly different, settings are the same. We need to separate the sync out or turn it off. That is going to give us both the horizontal and vertical sync that a VGA monitor is going to require. But that's not all it's going to take to get a signal out as well, because we need to deal with scan doubling. VGA monitors are 31 kilohertz, standard consoles are 240p or 15 kilohertz. And there is an excellent guide for the CRT configuration table that's going to list every single type of analog signal that Mr. can get out, whether it just uses the VGA port or uses one of those YC active adapters as well. And I'll leave a link to this below. But so many consoles are going to need to be line doubled if you want to get to 31 kilohertz, Neo Geo, Super Nintendo, PC Engine, CD, and Hue Card, any of the arcade cores like Capcom CPS and CPS2, Sega Genesis, Sega CD. Basically, if it's a console, it's running at 15 kilohertz, including PlayStation 1 and Sega Saturn. But now let's talk about S-Video and Composite, kind of the new kit on the block. It's been played around with a lot in 2022, but in 2023, it's kind of come into its own. And I did a video on this a few weeks ago as well that I'll link below if you missed that. But a lot of people want S-Video and Composite because it kind of blends the image in a way they remember. And in some instances, it looks really good. We have the Composite, and that's exactly what it sounds like. It's every bit of the video signal cramped into one line. This is what most people remember from back in the day playing Super Nintendo or Genesis. And we also have S-Video, which is Luma and Chroma separated out. Now, these do sync in different methods as well, and we'll get into that in a moment. But just remember, if you get one of these active adapters, it does not plug into the VGA port. They're both female connectors. No matter how hard you try, it's just not going to work. So we need to have a VGA cable in between a male to male. Now I'm going to leave a link below to one of the cables I like that has pin 9 connected, at least at the time of recording this video. But manufacturers love to change the configuration of their cable and list it underneath the same listing. So as of the making of this video, the cable linked below for VGA has pin 9 connected. That may very well change. I'll get into why pin 9 is so important in a little bit, but it doesn't 100% matter at the same time, but you'll get it when I explain it. But this is just so much fun to have S-Video. This is how I grew up playing consoles on composite then to S-Video. But if you've never used S-Video before, just be aware that the connector is keyed and you want to make sure that you're pushing it in in the right configuration. I can't imagine you to fit it in there if it was upside down, but every time I say that, somebody surprises me. So just make sure you know S-Video is a keyed format. And if you have a PVM, there's usually an S-Video port in the back, and this is identical to consumer CRT televisions as well. If you see the S-Video port, you plug the cable in, you're good to go. Now on the RCA side, it is even simpler. It is just a barrel plug. There's no configuration whatsoever. Just make sure you pick nice cables, because I will say, depending on the quality of the cable, since it's an analog signal, you can end up with a really bad image if your cable's super cheap. 
If you need to use a PVM and you want to do composite, you're going to need that BNC to RCA barrel jack adapter again. And like I said, they're worth their weight in gold and they're absolutely dirt cheap. If you have a consumer set, just plug in the yellow cable into the yellow circle. You're 100% good to go. Now I talked about pin 9 and the VGA cables that I like. And that is because this board, the Breakout YC board, does need power. And on the VGA standard, pin 9 can carry a 5 volt signal, but a lot of modern VGA cables that are made now do not connect that pin because it is basically not essential outside of very specific uses, in this instance, Mr. But you can just power these active boards via USB-C as well. Now it does add an extra cable to the mix. We already have a decent amount of cables coming off of our Mr. But you can plug any USB-C cable that carries power, and trust me that is all of them, into this port right here. And at the other end you can use something like an Android or an iPhone wall ward. At least I know you can use an iPhone one because I tested it and it was perfectly fine. Just be aware these active boards do require power, however you want to get them over to it. You can use the USB-C, but don't forget on the top of the mister itself near that VGA port is this 3-pin header right here. If you jump the left and center pins together, that will activate 5 volts across pin 9, and that will power that YC board without any other external adapters. You're literally just sending 5 volts across pin 9, but that is just for that adapter. If you're not using it, take the jumper off. You don't want to be sending any voltage over the line otherwise, because I have no idea what you're hooking it up to. You just need to buy a jumper, because by default all of these are open, and Mr. does not come with a spare one. But the settings you need to use if you're going to do S-Video or Composite are on screen as follows. Switch these modes over, make sure that you have all the settings correct, and you're going to get the S-Video and the Composite video out of your mister, and you can hook it up into a PVM or any sort of consumer CRT that accepts those signals. And pretty much, I would believe, all of you at least have Composite on the back, unless you're dealing with a very old TV, and then you probably know what you're doing. But those are all the analog signals that Mr. can carry in 2023. RGB, VGA, and Component do it right off the I.O. board. S-Video and Composite need to have that active adapter, but it is definitely worth it. These are the signals you can get to play analog off your Mr. and I highly recommend you use at least one of them. Sure that if you have any questions, leave me a comment down below and I'm happy to help. I'll be back next Thursday with another Mr. video on videos for the week as well. But in 2023, Mr. has every single analog signal you could possibly want covered. See you guys next time. Bye bye.